Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. My name is Captain, and welcome back to episode 3 of my Micro Survival Let's Play. In this episode, we will use the Neverite ingots we gathered from the last video to turn our diamond tools and armor into Neverite. We will then build an XP farm to help us enchant those items. Alright, let's get started. So, I have a total of 8 ingots and another 2 back at base. To turn the items into Neverite, I needed to make a smithing table. The next job was to find a way to the closest mob spawner that we found during our mining expedition. I had written down the coordinates of every single spawner that we found, and the closest one was in this direction. I figured the easiest and quickest way was to build a tunnel leading straight there. After finally locating it, the next step was to turn it into a functioning XP farm. I tend to make a skeleton farm in every world that I create, and I have been making them since the early days of Minecraft. First, you need to dig around the spawner to create a large room for the mobs to spawn in. I like having easy access to a workstation nearby, so I build a room adjacent to the spawner. The beauty of the XP farm is through the water system. By placing blocks at the back of a room, all the skeletons would spawn in the water and the water current would push them into this trench. That trench would have water blocks at each end, creating a current leading to the middle. In the middle there is a hole leading down to the bottom by 22 blocks. The skeletons that fall to the bottom are left on half a heart of health. Even those that spawn with armor don't survive more than 1-2 to two hits by a sword.
I like to see the skeleton is full to the doom, so I build an observation room where you can safely go AFK and wait for the skeletons to pile up. At the bottom there is a series of hoppers leading to a chest, where any loot that is dropped by the skeletons is safely collected. There is a lava pit on the left side of the room to throw any rubbish into it, as well as a chest area on the right for collecting loot that is fit for display or enchanting. With the amount of bows that I collected, I began to create my own by combining my favorites together. Enchanting does take a toll on your XP bar, so I went AFK to get something to eat. You can clearly see how efficient this is. None of the skeletons get caught in any corners, and any skeletons that spawn on top of a spawner eventually walk off into the water. From there, just massacre them all for unlimited XP. The next part was to gather sugarcane to create paper. Not only for making books, but for trading with the villagers for mending books. I 
had gone in two villages with mending, so I used a machine which we made in the last episode to generate some better trades. One of which was Frostwalker. However, I did not end up using it. From there, I built a railway leading from a lush cave all the way to a spawner for easier travel. I like to take time with my builds and adding details into it. Instead of a simple enchantment room, the pillars in the corner and the chandelier above it give it a more eye-opening look. I added a chest to the side to hold all the lapis that we collected. I only had 9 bucks left for enchanting, so I set out to gather more leather. But first, I needed to make sure I could get the max 30 levels from the enchantment table. I stopped by the village to purchase more emeralds to get more mending books. The end goal being a mending enchantment on every piece of gear. I slaughtered many animals far and wide for the leather, apart from the babies of course. They don't give any leather or loot so it isn't worth it. I created 38 books which was more than enough for enchanting. So far, this is what I had collected. A few incomplete sets of armor, but it wouldn't be long until I had some more. To speed up the process of getting more enchantments, I created a fish XP farm too, next to a skeleton farm. I eventually found some fishing rods with mending and later on look of a sea and lure, which sped up the process. In the observation room I created a smelting system and put down a grindstone to disenchant any unwanted items for extra XP. Any disenchanted items such as gold and iron armor can be put into the top chest. From there they are filtered down into the furnace. The fuel for the furnace comes from a chest on the right that is full of disenchanted bows.
I spent a very long time just fishing, killing skeletons, and smelting armor. I got some real good enchantment rolls this way. Just to name a few, mending, unbreaking, efficiency, and looting. I don't know how many hours I spend at this location just enchanting and disenchanting over and over again. So let me show you exactly what enchantments I have. Now all the pieces of gear have mending on them. So, apart from mending, starting with a helmet we have... Aqua Infinity 1, Protection 4, Respiration 3, Unbreaking 3. For a chest plate, Protection 4, Unbreaking 3. For leggings, Protection 4 and Unbreaking 3. For the boots, Feather of Falling, Protection 4, Death Strider 3, Unbreaking 3. For the shield, Unbreaking 3. Now for the tools, starting with a sword. Unbreaking 3, Sharpness 5, Looting 3, Fire Aspect 2. For the pickaxe, Unbreaking 3, Fortune 3, and Efficiency 5. For the axe, Sharpness 4, Silk Touch 1, Unbreaking 3, and Efficiency 5. For the shovel, Unbreaking 3, and Efficiency 5. For the fishing rod, Luck of a Sea 3, Unbreaking 3, Lure 3. For the bow, Unbreaking 3, Flame 1, Punch 1, Power 5, and Infinity 1. And finally, for the Trident, which we got in the last episode, Unbreaking 3, Impaling 5, Loyalty 3, and Channeling 1. This is how much loot I got from the Skeleton Spawner alone. I used up more than half a dozen stacks of lapis enchanting all the books, many of which I disenchanted. You only get around one nugget of gold or iron from every piece of armor that you smelt. I will let you guys work out just how much there was. Now for the fish farm. I only kept the stuff that was worth keeping. Everything else was thrown away into the lava pool. And there you have it, that is the enchanting all completed. In the next episode we will begin to drain this lava lake and get started on building up our underground kingdom. Please do like and share if you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss episode 4. Thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.